American ore is loaded into mine cars by electrically operated loading machines, capable of loading all of the ore broken during an eight-hour shift. And this often amounts to 100 cars. A loading machine is almost human in its responsiveness to the delicate controls. This mechanism is of the self-contained caterpillar tractor type and can be moved under its own power to new locations. Nobody knows exactly how much lead has been recovered from the lead belt mines in the last 200 years. Some, of course, was mined under the French beginning in 1720. Except for brief intervals, mining operations have been almost uninterrupted since that time. These high, cleaned out soaps constitute the most impressive visible evidence of past operations. Following the horizontal body of ore, Miners have drilled and cut and blasted for decades, yet nowhere will one see a single piece of timber support. The aftermath of all this work is found in great catacomb-like chambers, nearly 200 feet high in places. How much ore remains in the lead belt? No one knows. But the region is now, and for years to come, promises to be the foremost producer of lead in the United States. Miners become as skilled as trapeze artists, working on high platforms suspended from the roof scores of feet above the floor of the stoke. Skilled miners swing back and forth on the walls of the stoke, scaling down loose and hanging material to make certain that there's no loose rock or other threat to the safety of the men below. With constant improvement, ore is being mined today that would have been impractical in the past. Miners drilling high in the roof are protected from falling by the wearing of safety harnesses fastened to the platform. Safety is the paramount consideration at all times. As drilling progresses, the work is carefully inspected by the foreman. In these large soaps, prospecting and mining is continuously carried on. Large boulders are drilled and blasted to facilitate removal of the ore, while surveyors measure the stoke and gather data to keep mining maps up to date. Through vast underground cathedrals, ore trains go to the shaft where the ore will be hoisted to the surface. It's hard to realize that man has carved these gigantic stokes with their massive pillars. So similar are they to the fantastic forms carved by Mother Nature and the elements through the centuries. But it was the persistent toil and ingenuity of the miner working in darkness by the flicker of a small miner's lamp which created these royal gorges. Electric locomotives haul trains of 25 to 50 cars as much as six miles inside the mine and at speeds of nine or 10 miles an hour. Prior to dumping, the entire ore train passes over automatic scales that weigh each car as it passes without uncoupling. This complete railroad terminal, located 400 feet underground with heavy trains arriving every few minutes and departing empty, may well be likened to that of a great city. At the bottom of the ore shaft are located the rotary dumps. The cars are dumped into the ore pockets three at a time without uncoupling.